Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Digital Dentistry Series from Evidence. My name is Morge. I'm Technical Specialist at Evidence. And today I'm honored to host Katie Swindell from Florida. Thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. So today we're going to talk about how AI can elevate your dental practices. This session will be around 30 minutes. So I'm inviting the audience to drop their questions along the way using this opportunity. And we're going to answer as many questions as we can. So let me start by with introducing Katie for you guys. She's a, an accountant turned dentistry enthusiast with over seven years experience in dental lab management and software. She's also passionate about dental technology such as digital dentistry and AI. And she's senior manager for channel partnerships at Overjet AI. Anything else you want to add to this intro, you go for it, please. Yeah, absolutely. I'll share my slide if you want me to jump in that sure. quick. Is that okay? Sure. Okay, so it, I got a little goofy with this, so apologize in advance. Oh, that's totally fine. <laughs> but I, I did want to share with you guys a little bit about me that's a little informal. Um, so like she said, my name is Katie Swindle. Um, I'm currently living in Florida, but um, a little bit of background about me, just so you guys know where I come from, um, is like she said, I'm originally an accountant. Um, that was what I was really passionate about. I went to school for, thought that was going to be my life, um, and then bumped into a dental lab. So my sister was actually a dental assistant, and I remember her telling me, I'm going to work for this dental lab, and we were both born and raised in Mississippi, and so I was like, "There's that's got to be a scam. There's no such thing as a dental lab, um, but she actually recruited me to come over, so I started my career in dentistry, disinfecting impressions, making boxes. I was in college, so anything to make a dollar. So I was doing that, still pursuing accountancy, and this dental lab thing just kind of took off into a career. I watched them get acquired by a company called Knight Dental Group out of Tampa, Florida, watched that transition into what is now Lexier Dental Group, and uh, so a lot of things kind of happened along the way. I, I did end up leaving and going to KPMG for a little bit, um, so moved to, from Mississippi to New York City, so you can imagine oh, some wow. of culture shock with the, <laughs> the accent and everything. Some people thought I was Polish with this accent. Don't know where that came from, but, um, but yeah, so made that big jump. And then ultimately I was like, my home is in dentistry. Um, that's where it, it's, it's fast. I can kind of create my own path. I can learn. Uh -huh. and, um, so I ended up relocating to Tampa, Florida, working with Knight Dental Group, now known as Lexier. So headed their CX efforts, um, ended up, they split, they had a proprietary application. So the software side of my background, one comes from managing that CDT team that I was working with back in Tampa, learned so much from them. Um, and then if you know anybody like Barb Warner, Scott Pincus, like these are people that are really important, at least for night, like they were, they were yeah. big folks in the industry. So got to learn from them, but really got to see where the dental industry took off, which was it, it started digitizing. So um, when I first started with Blue Box, it was PBS impressions. Of course, I, I probably wouldn't have had a job had we started today. <laughs> I was disinfecting those PBS impressions, but um, I got to see that take off. So got interested. You see this picture here. Um, if you know anything about like a line technology, that's Renee Harris. They're scanning me. Um, she works oh, wow. with the zero team, the lab team. But I uh, really got to see that take off. And then we actually had a proprietary app called My Lab Connect that we split off from the lab business to be able to sell that to other labs and DSO. So did that for a little bit. And then about two months ago, I made the jump to Overjet. So it's oh, well. been a, a learning experience, but so happy to be here. Nice. So you just joined Overjet two months ago. Yes. Interesting. Yes. So I was reading some interesting stories from your CEO about Overjet, how it actually started. Can you share that with the audience, please? Yeah, I would love to. I'll jump kind of over to this one because I, I feel like this slide definitely kind of captures her story. Uh, but yeah, so we were founded by um, an MIT grad, Dr. Warda Enum. And um, I think her story is really cool because she actually co-founded it with a guy that kind of helped her make this discovery. But um, so Ward had had kind of the normal uh, patient experience that a lot of us have of you have the normal dentist that you go to regularly. Um, you might have a few cavities here and there, but nothing significant in her, you know, oral health history that should, you know, say, she, oh, she's an implant candidate or anything like that. It was mostly just the normal upkeep. Uh, but she had a change in, um, I believe it was like insurance or some life change. So 
she ended up going to um, another dentist who ended up saying, you need all kind of work. It was a, like a roundhouse treatment plan. And so she was kind of confused because she said, why wasn't this flag to me sooner? And it wasn't necessarily that one of them was right or one was wrong. It was just she felt like she needed to be a little bit more educated about her mouth and that there was so much subjectivity depending on, you know, maybe it's the clinician, maybe it's the day, maybe it's the geographical region. Um, so she, um, being the smart person she is, decided to create some objectivity in that space. So she actually co-founded with uh, Dr. Chris Balaban, who's our VP Clinical Affairs, and kind of took on this journey. So the first thing they did was have ML learn how to count teeth. So uh, uh -huh. it, yes, I've seen things about that. And um, so yeah, that that's kind of the, the origins of the story is she had had some experience in AI, but learned a lot from dentistry, but really it kind of took off from her being a patient herself. Right. So talking about AI, can you tell us what is AI imaging actually? Yeah. So um, I'll start by telling you what it's not. <laughs> so a lot of people get a little nervous about AI, myself included, uh -huh. because you don't want to become, you know, these these futuristic movies that we see with robots. But I truth, know. Yeah, it's kind of scary. But Crazy. the truth of the matter is with like Facebook and Netflix and some of the things we're seeing, we're already interacting with the AI. Um, and like this slide here, you see there's all of these different things that were probably really scary in their time, like loops and radiographs. And then we've got intraoral cameras and, CDC right. and, you know, along comes AI and it's kind of that same feeling, but it's, it's not here to replace anybody. It, it's definitely can't make any diagnosis as it stands, uh, but it's here kind of as that powerful sidekick. So it works the same as your brain. So when you're looking at something, your brain is using all these different wavelengths to try and figure out what it is and make a decision. So the AI okay. basically does the same thing. Um, you think of it as kind of like you're teaching your kid or somebody how to write in cursive. So it takes that muscle memory. And that's exactly what happened when Warda and the machine learning team and the dentist were teaching the machine learning how to pick up teeth numbers and color different teeth. So it just takes over time. And uh, but I, I wanted to start with that because it's always that fear of, oh, what is AI? And I think it's important to know what it, it isn't. And it's definitely not a dentist. It's not a dentist. Okay, cool. Yeah, because people are worried, okay, is it going to replace the dentist? How How is it going to actually really find their position, right, in the industry? Yeah. 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 So I, I got a new term here, NLP, which is natural language processing. So yeah, if you can explain a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, NLP is actually something that we're not really doing as much with Overjet. Overjet is more, you know, findings off of a 2D radiograph and highlighting that. Um, NLP, you can kind of think of like uh, Power BI as an example of NLP, um, or even Google, whenever you're typing normal language in and it's interpreting it, or ChatGPT is another good example. Um, but we, we're not currently using that at Overjet at this moment. Uh, maybe there's something on the back end, me being new, that I don't, I'm not aware of. But um, I, I do have experience with uh, NLP. So whenever I was working on the lab side, our, our uh, interface MyLab Connect that we ended up splitting off, we actually use that to query a database. So if there's anybody here that's familiar with like remake percentages and how all of that ties into reporting, I know that's a big one. So uh, if you think of it now with NLP, if, if you want to query a database, most of the time people have an Excel in front of them. They're going to do some type of pivot table, and then they're going to interpret that data. They're going to kind of put that human interaction. Uh, but the cool thing about NLP, it's kind of that bridge of AI and then what actually the data says, and it's giving you that natural language output. So you could say to the database or to Power BI or to My Lab Connect, um, you know, what is the percentage of remakes for uh, Dental 365 for the quarter of, you know, Q2 of 2024, something like that. Um, and it, it doesn't just give you the table, but it gives you the output. So it gives you that direct answer. Um, so that that's kind of the cool thing about NLP. I do think that a lot of AI companies will pick up some portion of that. But as it stands right now, Overjet is AI on 2D radiographs. Perfect. So how do you describe the AI's role in dental pathology detection? So I'll just kind of, I'll share this slide with you guys so you can kind of take a look at this. Um, like I said earlier, it's it's that sidekick. 
Um, and I think of it simply as, um, you know, whenever I get in my car to go to the gym in the mornings or in the afternoon, maybe I'm going to the grocery store or something, um, my phone, you know, as, as much as I'm like so scared of technology, my phone doesn't leave my side. And it will say, are you going to crunch fitness? Are you going? To <laughs> and it's like, that's scary that one, it knows based you know, <laughs> too predictable. Um, two, it's like, I never say no. And why is that? Because it's going to tell me if there's traffic down the road, it's going to tell me if there's a cop, if there's right. red light cameras, if there's a wreck. And it's not that I don't know how to get to Publix. Hopefully I do. I could spit and hit it from my house, but it's not that I don't know how to get to Publix or to Crunch Fitness or wherever it is. It's that I'm a better driver uh, because of what Apple Maps is giving me. So okay. kind of the same thing with AI and, and pathology um, is that it's it's not necessarily that a dentist needs it per se. They can definitely see it. They, they've been trained and they went to school for this very reason. Uh, uh -huh. But it's the benefits, the time savings, the patient education. So you can see here, this is toggling on and off. But, uh, you know, me as a normal a consumer, I thought with seven years in dentistry, I thought I knew everything to know about a mouth. And I got uh -huh. so old two months ago when I joined here. And I asked <laughs> my dentist, he uses AI in his office. He is, has Overjet. And I said, can you run my findings? And he pulled them up and showed them to me. And I was like, okay, this, this is impactful because I then started to understand how this objectivity will help patients gain trust in their dentist. Right. Okay. Interesting. So um, is there any data to say how much more accurate AI could be compared to a radiograph for dentists, let's say for caries, how, how much they can be more accurate? I would say it's more about, it's less about accuracy, but more about the time and the patient uh -huh. education. Um, I know with some of our studies we've seen with this tool being a patient educational tool that the offices are using, I believe it was Dr. Joshua Prentice saw an uprise of 29% case acceptance. So it, it's definitely, so Overjet or AI in general is not going to be any smarter than the dentist. It might be quicker just because it's, that's the sole thing that it's doing. Yeah. But if you think about a dentist day to day, and I'm sure some of the people on the line can uh, resonate with this, but they're doing a number of different things. They're not just looking at a radiograph. They're entertaining. They're making sure the patient's comfortable. Maybe they're running up front sometimes to do something. So that they're doing a lot of things that in other facets of healthcare, they're not expected to do. So I feel like dentistry is under this like scrutinization, especially with regards to time. So uh, it's not that it's more accurate than a dentist. It's just, this is over Jet's one job. So it's, it's there to be a sidekick for them um, so that they can pull those things up. Even the hygienists we're seeing are kind of prepping the patients beforehand with Overjet uh -huh. to kind of instill that trust, get them to understand what's going on in that radiograph. Instead of grayscale, scale, it's colors that they can understand, or, you know, it's, it's actually quantifying that bone level loss if there's any. Um, so they can start reiterating that to the patient. Uh, and then the doctor, of course, comes in and makes their diagnosis and treatment plans. Interesting. So how much do you think that AI can faster diagnose than a radiograph, you know? So from the time that they actually take the x-ray, usually we say it's when you hang up that sensor and, you know, get your get back to the patient in the chair, the AI findings are already there, but it takes about 30 to 40 seconds from the time that x-ray is taken to when that AI findings are there for you to toggle on and off. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, but as we are saying, this AI thing is really smart. They can just remember everything. They can record everything. Is there a risk of over-diagnosis when you're using AI? So I, I, that's such a good question because I, I felt this as a consumer and I realized really quickly how poor of a patient I had been over the years is that I always walked in, I think all of us kind of do to a degree, even being in the dental industry is you walk in, you're like, what are they going to try and sell me? What What is being done here? But when I go to my normal, like my primary physician, I'm not thinking, oh, they're going to sell me cough syrup um, or, oh, my blood sugar is this. They're trying to tell me, they're trying to sell me that I have diabetes or something like that. That's never the case. But in dentistry, we have kind of this feeling and I feel like it's because they wear all of these different hats. And I feel like it's also the distrust that sometimes patients have with just normal health care. Um, and so I don't think it's necessarily that we've had a problem with overdiagnosis historically. I believe it's underdiagnosis. 
And Overjet's here to kind of standardize that and better educate people. So it's it's less about like, I need to treat all of these areas. It's more, these are the areas you should be aware of. And then the doctor and the patient can make that decision together. Oh, perfect. So uh, can you discuss how AI tools can help dentists visualize those critical information? Just yeah. So really quick, um, like said, at a glance. Yeah. So, you know, for me, especially like I talk about it from a normal consumer perspective, but a 2D radiograph, like I'm learning now the different grayscale areas. I've been told it, you know, my whole life, every time I go to the dentist, this is what this means. This is the change in grayscale. But what it really is, is highlighting it in a digestible manner. And it's doing it for that time saving. So at a glance, well, you can see it's kind of toggling on and off here, but the blue is going to be existing fillings or restorations. In red, that's going to be decay that you're probably going to want to take note to. I don't think it's showing it here, but in orange, um, there's going to be places that could be possible caries that have not entered into the dentin yet. Um, and then, of course, we're highlighting different spots where there could possibly be calculus. And then something that, um, you know, we're doing as well that you can't really do with the naked eye is quantify that bone level measurement. So what it's doing is actually measuring the pixels in between the CEJ and the crest of bone to give you uh, that actual measurement. So that's why you see that 1.3. And should it get mm -hmm. larger than three millimeters, that's when we're going to highlight it in red as something that you might could do something with perio. Um, just so it, it's it's more digestible for the patient and it allows you to have more time to actually get to that diagnosis or that treatment plan with them rather than trying to make them understand. Okay, nice. So do you think there's a difference between a practice who's, which using AI and the one that they are not using AI? Yeah, I would say, because we, we get that a lot is, you know, I, I do this already with my own eyes. And I would say it's really just gaining that trust factor. So uh, one, you've got, like I said, the time savings, but I think it's really impactful that your consumers or your patients are understanding what's going on as well. Um, and I would say what we're seeing right now, at least, is patients are starting to understand how this fits in. And we've actually got patients you know, filling out our forms. We, we're, we you know, of course, business to business. So typically dentists are interacting with us, uh, but we've got people on our website that are saying, hey, can you point me to a dentist that's using AI? So we're starting to see where people are picking up on that. And I think it's important as we think about the millennial age and they're now the people that have dental insurance. They're now that generation that is, is paying attention to that. So they rely on Google for a lot of things. They're they're Googling uh, health concerns. So I think AI is going to become more prevalent. And I don't think it's a um, if. I feel like it's a win because I, I feel like the consumers are going to start to demand to have this type of engagement. Interesting. Nice. So when it comes to treatment plan, would you say that the day that the day AI provides clinicians with help them to, uh, I don't know, more inform about treatment plans? Yeah, I would say absolutely. Um, one, it, it gains that trust back to the patient. But another thing that we're doing is we're pulling data, not just from the 2D radiograph, but also from the practice management system. So whenever you think about like possible perio treatment or SRP, things like that, we're actually doing a look back into the practice management system to see what was previously done. So if there was any, um, you know, pocket depths that we can gather from there. We're highlighting that as well as the bone level measurement. So anything three millimeters or above, and you've also got those pocket depth measurements, we're going to be showcasing that as possible treatment to you. So I think it helps mostly with planning the day-to-day, -day, knowing what you're going to do in advance. Um, and then of course, it's it's gathering all of that and putting it into one place for you. So clinically in your morning huddle, you can go into it knowing like these are the things that could be treated or even like missed on um, x-rays that hadn't been billed, things of that nature. So I definitely say it assists them with their treatment planning. Nice. So would you say the dentist who's using AI can come up with a different diagnosis than the dentist who's not using AI? I would say no. Um, I mean, it, it's definitely possible. There's so much subjectivity, but you know, what we're reading is going to be that we were the AI, the machine learning was actually trained by a dentist. So some of the same things that we might would have trouble with with our own eyes, the AI would too. But really what they're trying to do is, you know, elevate their clinical decision making. You know, we're, we're helping to reduce eye fatigue, um, elevating that clinical consistency. So it helps draw the dentist eyes to places that might need attention. Um, but of course, it's 
I would say that it, there's probably not much difference. It's just what they're able to do with that powerful sidekick versus one that's not. Nice. Actually, we got a question from audience. Uh, so it's like, as a cosmetic dentist, can AI help in case of acceptance for a smile designs? I'm so, what was the last? Um, I missed the last part. Yeah. Can AI help in case of acceptance for smile designs? Yeah, I would say absolutely. Um, I mean, it, it kind of depends on the outcome um, desired, but sure. I mean, if you've got a reason clinically to do something with smile design, I would say for sure. Uh, but if it's something where it's strictly cosmetic and they don't have any existing carries or places they would want to dig into, uh, then maybe not so much. But of course, we measure the decay missing field. So we call that a DMF value. Um, so really kind of what that draws back to, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, is kind of that insurance side of things. So let's say you have a cosmetic patient that uh, wants to do a full roundhouse, but they've also got these high DMF values, meaning that they've got a lot of decay or previously filled teeth. Um, those are things that you can flag to say these are things that probably insurance is going to cover. Uh, so I'll showcase that to you in a little bit with how we work with the payers. But I would say that would definitely help a cosmetic dentist because that's going to help with the assistance payment side on the end. So you can better be prepared to say like, OK, this is something that's going to be fully cosmetic. You're probably going to have to put this bill on your own. Um, or if it's something where you have high DMF values or decayed values, that's something where it does warrant a crown or a veneer or a filling or something like that, where you could basically say that this portion of it might be covered by insurance. Uh-huh. Interesting. So do you think AI is helpful with keeping data as well? Let's say the records of the patients, whatever we have talked about, that session, this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I would say for sure. Um, so one thing like we were talking about is that PMS data that we're pulling. So we're pulling and highlighting things that basically we would feel this patient is coming in for. So based off of the historical look back of that radiograph, plus what's already been done. So we're not going to say, oh, this patient's coming in for SRP if you've already diagnosed for SRP and had that in your practice management system. Uh, but I would love to plug here. There's a company that we partner with called Bola AI. Um, so something that Bola AI actually does, and just, just for information, um, uh -huh. is when you're, you're chair side and you're wanting to chart and put all that information back into the practice management system, it's actually listening to you and digesting it. So it, uh, there's probably a portion of NLP that it's using as well, but then it's going to actually chart that for you. So there's a number of different companies um, that are out there, but one that we partner with is Bola AI. So combined with this case acceptance time savings tool. And then in the meantime, you're talking to your patients and it's picking that up and charting it for you. Like, I just feel like we're in the Jetsons age. If you use those two technologies, it's really cool. Right. So can this stuff determine the development of the teeth as well? Let's say checking the history and say, okay, this tooth is going, I don't know, over eruption or something is happening. Can, can that software actually determine the, over, the development as well? Yes. So what we do when we first install, and I'll flip to this slide. Um, so we integrate with both the practice management system and the imaging system. So we're going to do a look back. So we're going to pull all that data to basically say what is done previously. Now, henceforth, if you continue to stay with Overjet or AI, you're going to have those findings as you move along. So when you pull up that patient in your daily patients page and you click on their images, at the very top, you're going to have a timeline so you can actually see the progression. So there's things that I had a dentist, we pulled it up and there was one in orange and he said, those are things that I might not even tell my patient about. And uh -huh. said, over time, you can see that change. And I'm like, I would love you as a dentist because those are things that maybe like I wouldn't want to treat. Maybe it's a financial reason or time or whatever it might be. But if you show me that and say, hey, this is something that's not of my immediate concern. I know you have such and such and such and such coming up, um, but I want to watch it. Like that gives me so much trust as somebody who doesn't understand a radiograph. So right. those are things that I, we're kind of saying, like you can highlight over time. Um, and then the other portion of that is, of course, we're enriching that data, like annotating those 2D radiographs for you so you can do all of the, those features. Um, and then as you go live, as I said, you'll continue to have those annotations moving forward. All right. So when it comes to presenting presenting the case to the patient, because sometimes, you know, it's not easy to convince them or to really show them what's happening in their mouth. So do you find this AI tool actually helpful with that as well? 
Yeah, I would say for sure. Now it's it's up to the dentist or the clinicians, hygienist to say like, am I going to showcase this to the patient or not? Um, so it kind of depends on what your day looks like or who that patient might be. And uh -huh. one example that I'll use is, you know, Miss Jones, who's been with you for 25 years, has your trust, knows all, it, like pulling that up and maybe showing her the findings, like she might think it's cool, but it, I would say it's, it's most powerful for somebody that might have a little bit of distrust or that's new um, or that doesn't understand what's going on or has all these like really extensive treatment plans. These are things where I would say you'd want to use AI. Now, of course, you could show Miss Jones if you would like, but it's not all the times that you would probably need to use AI to communicate with your patients. Perfect. Actually, we really find this topic interesting and we got a lot of questions. Let me ask you some of them. So someone is asking, can AI feature be integrated with CRM? In the future, yes, I would I would love that. Um, I think there's probably some that are already doing that, maybe via Salesforce. I haven't seen like a widespread. Uh, but yeah, I mean, kind of the thought of me, at least, I come from the lab side. So everything's even on this side, I'm like crowns, bridges, implants. I'm thinking about that kind of stuff. So I'm just like, wow, how impactful would it be for me on the lab side to know and be able to predict, okay, this is that patient's DMF value. They use Night Dental Group or Row Dental Lab or something, just a, an example. But um, to know, what, is that going to come in? Or even by geographical region, how does this impact what type of cases that I might get? That'll help you prepare for workflows. Um, so I would say yes in the future, uh, but as it stands today, at least not us yet. Got you, got you. So I, I know you already talked about insurance and stuff, but can you say how AI can be helpful with saving costs? Yes, absolutely. So um, I'll tell you kind of how we work with the insurance companies and why it kind of works that the practices have this tool as well. Um, so the ADA is already using um, AI to basically auto-approve cases. Now, the good thing, people, again, kind of get a little nervous about that. The good thing is that AI is never going to have somebody disapprove. Um, so it's it's not going to say, okay, we read this thing, so we're going to decline this. Um, anything is still going to go to that human, um, you know, that, that clinical review, should it be needed. Um, but... AI actually helps auto-approve cases. So one thing that we're trying to do over here is, you know, look at that point of care. So that adjudication at chair side. So if you think about it this way, you've got the x-rays. We're working with the payers as well. So why wouldn't it be that you could say, oh, I know in advance that this is going to be fully covered because the DMF values are this. I've done my clinical findings, you know, outside of the 2D radiograph. So it, it's really neat to see how they're using it. And then as we've seen with some of the office managers, especially with that bone level measurement, if you're trying to get things like uh, period treatment or SRP approved, things like that, um, you can actually export the findings and submit that with your claim with Everjet. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we got another question. Are there any features that can predict cavity before it's actually visible with using AI? So not a ton of predictability in our system just yet. Um, but of course, you can kind of make your own clinical diagnosis. It, what it does is it'll give you that timeline. So we're going to interpret what's going on. And I would say the predictability portion of it probably comes, I'll show you this slide here, um, in the daily patients page. So it's not necessarily that we're predicting what's going to happen in the future, but we're telling you based off of the past and the practice management system, what we believe that patient could be in here for today. So when I talk about morning huddle, that's where I feel like this is the most impactful. So it's it's a little hard to see, but these little bubbles here are telling you what we think from the past 2D radiographs, or the AI beliefs from the past 2D radiographs, and what you've already built for, already done in the practice management system, what that patient could be in there for today. Um, so I would say the predictability piece is right there. Got you, got you. Okay, we're actually getting out of time. I know the marketing team wants to run a poll. I let them do that. But talking about all of these benefits that AI can bring to the practices, let's say, uh, uh, I don't know, a dentist has a new practice. How, where they should start with the AI? How can they just integrate AI in their practice? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, you definitely can reach out to us. Um, I'll, I'll highlight here where you can actually um, fill out a form to learn more about Overjet. Um, so what we'll do is once you reach out to us, you can um, 
give us get us contact with your IT team to basically set up that sync with your imaging system um, as well as your practice management system. And then from there, kind of what I love about Overjet, and I kind of joke about this all the time. We're we're kind of a I would say a smaller company. We're a startup. But, um, you know, I always joke, I'm in Tampa, but I, I fly around everywhere. And I always say like, oh, it's because we've hired too many dentists. That's why we don't have more, <laughs> more of these. But um, we have such a large clinical team. And that's what makes me so proud. Uh, Dr. Terry Dolan, who uh, was the previous dean at the University of Florida uh, School of Dentistry. So she kind of leads that effort. So um, I would say it starts there, but then what really is impactful with adopting AI in your office is that white glove approach that Overjet takes. So we have hygienists on staff that will go in and do training. Um, so I would just say like having your whole team involved, get your office managers, your dental assistants, hygienists all on the phone for that those trainings, because it, it's not just a tool for the dentist. We've had treatment right. coordinators come up and say, oh, I'm getting this for my dentist because this helps me. So I would say it starts there just probably with this QR code, but then, you know, it's kind of up to you on how extensive you allow it to be. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks for sharing your time and knowledge with us, Katie. We really appreciate that. So what is the most important message that you think that this, the attendees can get from these topics, from this session? Yeah, I would say um, my biggest thing is like AI is not here to replace you. It's it's to help you scale. It's to help sure. you, you know, create that standard of care, hire that associate fresh out of college and give him the confidence or her the confidence with so, a tool like this. So you just kind of use it as you will. And it, it's here to, you know, help you create that vision, whatever that looks like for yourself. Uh, but we're seeing it widely adopted now. So I would say, take your time, do your education, like learn about it as much as you can and make the best decision that works for your practice. Nice. Perfect. Thank you so much. We're actually out of time right now. So anything you want to add at the ending, please go for it. Uh, no, I, I think we covered it well. I just want to thank everybody. Um, and like I said, I kind of come from this from a consumer or a lab person's perspective. And when I saw it on myself, I realized I needed to floss more. I realized how bad of a patient Aww. I was. So um, I would say definitely look at it from both angles of like me as a clinician, how can this help me? But also if I didn't understand that grayscale, what would help me understand? And it, it could be AI. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure meeting you, Katie. And yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us audience and see you soon in the next episode. Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Take care, everybody. Sure. Have a good one. Oh, 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 oh,